Welcome in to this week's episode of NC Preps TV. I'm your host, Josh McKinnon, joined as always by my co-host, Kevin Utz, and ncpreps.com publisher, Dina King. Last week's ncpreps.com game of the week was East Forsyth at Ragsdale. East Forsyth defeated the Tigers 35-7 to on their home field. Kevin, you had a chance to be there. Can you tell us a little about the game? Yeah, Josh, East Forsyth really controlled the game from the start to the end. It was a 35-7 score, but that's not even t- that's it wasn't even that close in the game. East Forsyth really controlled it. For one stat, for I'm gonna give you right here, the defense held Ragsdale to 131 yards total. But the real story is Ragsdale in the second half had 12 plays for 27 yards in the entire second half. East Forsyth led 21 to seven at half. The only score that Ragsdale did have was off the first drive, actually. They ran a speed option, pitched it back to running back Marquez Eliezer, and he threw it downfield to Brandon Walker for a 58-yard touchdown pass. And after those 58 yards, like I said, 131 yards total for the game. East Forsyth controlled it behind running attack of Garrison Duncan and Levante, the L-Train Smith. And they you can understand why they call him the L-Train there, because he runs through every defender that even tries to tackle him, Josh. Wow, uh, so I'm guessing he was the player player of the game for you. Um, it was a it was a good mix. The defense has to have it with um Jalen Forrest because he really stopped the entire offense for Rags on the entire game. But on offense, it was a combination of L Train and Garrison Duncan both running for close to 100 yards. But L Train added two touchdowns on the game. What do you think really was the key factor in stopping the Ragsdale offense? Because you know they've actually been able to move the ball for the majority of the games this year they've been in. Um, <laughs> just an aggressive, you know, swarming defense for East Forsyth. Um, like, uh, coach Todd Willard said after the game that he thinks they have one of the best teams in the state. And after seeing East Forsyth play twice this year and I saw him dominate Mount Tabor and I saw him dominate Ragsdale, I'm going to agree with him that this is one of the top three defenses I've seen in the entire season so far. Wow. It's a pretty bold statement there, but, uh, it's kind of, kind of hard to argue with the numbers they've put up so far this year. What's your uh, opinion on East Forsyth, uh, for the rest of the season? Uh, I'm going to say they have a good chance to go undefeated on this season. I haven't. They've played the hardest schedule in the entire state so far this season, and they haven't had a close game yet. The closest one was 31 to 10. I mean, I don't. Anything you put in front of them, they just walk through it. So I don't. I mean, I'm thinking of undefeated season and trying to get some home playoff games where some Charlotte teams come up there to play them in the playoffs. Yeah, that uh, pod is looking mighty, mighty strong in that four double A division because you know Butler and Mallard Creek's going to be in that. And, you know, it's going to be a, a good-looking pod there. Yeah, I'd love – that's a game I'd really love to see is East Forsyth and Butler so far. I'd like to see that defense go up against the Butler offense. Wow, really? Really. Butler? They're, they're that fast and aggressive. I think they would have a good shot against Butler. Wow, that's a, that's a bold statement. But uh, you've seen them play twice this year and seen Butler play twice this year. So I guess if anybody can make that statement, it would be you. That's a game I would love to see in the playoffs. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's move on to the players of the week this week. Uh, Dina, do you want to start us off? Okay. In the private division, we have uh, Quentin Chavis of High Point Christian. He completed 12 of 21 passes for 210 yards with with three touchdowns in a loss to Metro Atlanta Christian. In the 1A, Grant Rivers of Hendersonville completed 15 of 25 passes for 318 yards and three touchdowns. He also ran for a score in a 44 to 21 win over Madison. In the 2A, J. Ron Rankin of Reedsville. Rankin had 19 carries for 168 yards and four touchdowns and a 40 to 7 win over Graham. In 3A, Ken McDowell of Grays Creek. Ran 15 times for 275 yards with five touchdowns and a 42-14 win over Union Pines. And in the 4A, Detrez Newsom of Hope County ran 32 times for 296 yards and three touchdowns and a 21 to nothing win over Westover. And we will be talking about Newsom a little bit later in the show. But while we're talking about individual players... I wanted to give a shout out to Taekwon Lewis of Tarboro High School on his commitment last week to the Ohio State University. He will be a great ambassador for that school as well as a player for years to come. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. 
but we'll be right more right back with more after this. Welcome back to NC Preps TV. I'm your host, Josh McKinnon, here with my co-host, Kevin Utz, and ncpreps.com publisher, Dina King. This week's ncpreps.com game of the week is Newburn at Hanover. This battle is in the Mid-Eastern 4A. Both teams undefeated, and it's a top 10 matchup in the ncpreps.com poll. Dina, what do you see go happening in this game? And uh, tell us some players to look for. You burn comes in ranked third in the 4A poll, and uh, they've been averaging over 44 points a game. So I know there's going to be a lot of offense in this game, and some players to be on the lookout is quarterback Josh Taylor, uh, running back Jashawn Watkins, and another player to look out for is Braylon Cherry, who can just he's a playmaker and he can do air, just a little bit of everything for the buyers. Uh, for New Hanover, who comes in ranked number eight in our 4A poll, uh, Travon Brown, an all-state wide receiver, had a big year last year, and he's off to another good start this year and uh, leading the under center for the Wildcats is sophomore Ward Coleman. And he's been putting up some good numbers, too. He had to replace a fabulous quarterback for the Wildcats last year, Bates Taylor. So I'm expecting a lot of offense. You know, you notice I didn't say many defensive players. Don't mean I don't know any. Just means I think there's going to be a lot of offense in, in this game. Kevin, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where you're going this week, but this might be a good one to check out. Uh, what are you looking for this week in this game? Well, I'm looking for a high, like Dina said, a high-scoring, good, close game. Um, it's great to have a sophomore quarterback playing for New Hanover, and I think it's going to cost them a little bit, but I think New Bern's going to be able to pull it out. Um, both teams have had a great season. They both have high point differentials, and both teams have been tested so far this season, playing Havelock in Scotland earlier this season. But And don't forget Hillside to begin the, the season early. That's a that's a pretty tough win for Newburn, although they did have Hillside at home. But, yeah, Newburn is definitely battle-tested going on the road and winning at Havelock. Even though it's a somewhat smaller school, that's still a strong win. And, obviously, like you said, Hanover uh, beating Scotland, who's also in the top ten in the poll this week. Um, guys, what's your prediction this week on the game? I'm going to go with uh, Newburn. Any reason there? I just I just think New Bern is their turn this year, you know. I mean, I think they're the team to beat in the 4A, 4AA East, whatever, whatever division they're in. Kevin, what about you? Well, New Bern swept them last year and ended their season, and I think they're going to start this season much the same, and I'm going with New Bern. Well, I'm going to go with New Bern there as well. Uh, you know, this is one of the – It's I think it's going to be a great game. And it's tough for me to go in a close game, go with a road team. But like I said, Newburn has proved themselves already this year with a, a really big road win, and Hanover's had one too. But I just, I, I just, I think Newburn's going to get this win. Uh, on to our next game, a big rivalry game. At that is Cummings at Reedsville. Kevin, we'll start with you first. Uh, what's your opinion on the game? Well, Reedsville's lost the last two years against Cummings, but I think this year they're going to turn it around and get the victory, so I'm going with Reedsville this week. Dina? Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Kevin. Reedsville, uh, they made a late-season run last year all the way to the 2 AA, uh Eastern Finals where they lost to Kinston. Um, they got some kids, J. Ron Rankin, who was our 2A player of the week this week. He's a... Uh, over 700 yards rushing and got a good quarterback there. Reedsville's got their old coach, Jimmy Teague. He's back this year. Uh, Teague has been a good coach for him that's won several state championships there. But um, in Cummins, you know, three and three, but they're, they're undefeated in conference. And, you know, there's no school in North Carolina that produces some of the best athletes 
in the yeah. in the state is Cummins. I mean, you know, you can look in the uh, college a few years ago in the NFL. You see several Cummins uh, mm-hmm. uh, alumni. So, but I, I hate uh, having to pick against Cummins, but I I, I think Reedsville's going to take it. Yeah, I'm with both you guys. I just think on paper, uh, Reedsville looks a little. A little too much for Cummings this year, but you know it's Cummings will be ready to play this game. It's a big rivalry game, and they're always ready for it every year. Um, and if we thought there was going to be a bunch of scoring in that first game, Newburn and Hanover, uh, I think these guys might break the scoreboard. I think there's going to be a lot of scoring this week. And as you mentioned, J. Ron Rankin, he's going to be one to look out for in the upcoming years. He's only a sophomore, guys, so uh, it'll be a big battle in the Mid-State 2A, that's for sure. Uh, and our next game, Hope County at Richmond County. Dina, we'll start with you this time in this huge battle in the Southeastern Conference. I like to call it the SEC of high school football because, in my opinion, it's one of the best conferences in the state. Um, what's your opinion? Well, I know the coaches there will uh, agree with you because it's a battle each week. You know, this is both both teams are undefeated, but, you know, uh, the first – the winner, you know, they're going to have some momentum, but they got to turn around and have another real tough test the next week. So uh, Richmond County is back in their, you know, they were young last year. They've got some great talent down there in uh, Rockingham and uh, led by Dak Wad Nichols, who's committed to state. And they got probably the state's best offensive lineman and Tyrone Crowder, who's, um, a major D1 recruit, um, Hope, led by Dutrez Newsom, our 4A player of the week. Uh, you know, he's got over a, a thousand yards on the state leading rusher. And, but it's at Richmond County. I know Hope beat him last year, but it's hard to go into Raider Stadium and get that W. And I think Richmond has been waiting a, a year f- to get this one back. So I'm going with Richmond. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to go with Richmond there as well. I just think the Raiders are gonna be too much for the Bucks this year. What about you, Kevin? Yeah, Dina took the words out of my mouth. With Richmond losing against Hoke last year and then being at home, I think it's just too much to overcome for Hoke. I'm going with Richmond. Yeah, and it's ever since the beginning of the season, I've just I've really thought Richmond County had a good chance to get back to the state championship this year and possibly win it. And they're still one of my favorites, so I'm definitely gonna have to go with them. And I'm the, I'm a strong person that wish that you know the Richmond County could play in the eastern part of the state. Nothing against Richmond. I think a lot of people would like to see you know Richmond and Scotland being in that eastern part of the uh, pod and matching up with these Charlotte schools. I think that would be a great state championship game. Dean, I'm sure you're not the only one who wishes that as well. But uh, we'll move on to our next game. The Blue Devils of Maiden travel to South Iredell to take on the Vikings in this Catawba Valley 2A matchup. Kevin, we'll start with you. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this game? Oh, I just think South Iredell is going to – they've won the last two years. I think they're going to make it three straight this year with South Iredell winning this game. Dina? South Iredell – They've been very, very good the last couple of years. They've had a couple of uh, conference championships and deeper run in the playoffs. Um, it's at South Iredale, so i, I got to pick South Iredale over Maiden, even though the Maiden, Maiden is playing really good right now after a shaky start. Yeah, last week for Maiden, running back Grant Yao had 208 yards on with four touchdowns. But uh, I just I really believe in the South Iredale team this year. They lose their their playmaker in Lachason Smith. He goes down for the season, and you know that defense has really stepped up without him out there, as, as well as the offense. Um, but I look for this week uh, quarterback Davin King. I think he really get has a good game, and uh, I'm looking for him as one of my players of the week next week. I think he's going to put up great numbers this week. In our next game, it's a highly anticipated matchup here in the Charlotte area. Vance takes on Mallard Creek. Um, I'm actually going to make it out to this game this week, but uh, Dina, we'll start with you. Uh, give us your prediction on this game as well as what you're going to be looking for. Well, I'm going to go with Mallard Creek. I just think they have 
a lot of offensive fire, firepower, especially when Marquez North gets the ball in his hands, has over 500 yards all purpose and 17 touchdowns. Uh, give the give the ball to him, and good things happen. Kevin, you've seen both of these teams play this year as well as I have. Um, obviously, Vance got down and dropped the game after. Well, they were really high on the game me and you were both at after beating Independence. Had a somewhat of a letdown game or actually just got outplayed in the Butler game and then dropped the game the following week in uh, what considered some to be a letdown game. How does What do you predict uh, Vance doing in this game? And do you think Vance will be able to recover from that great start after dropping the game to, against Butler? Well, if they'll be able to recover, I just don't think they'll be able to recover against Mallow Creek. I think they're going to be fine for the rest of the season, but this isn't the week for them to get this win. They've only scored 55 points once this entire season, while Mallow Creek has scored over 55 for the last four straight games. I just The offense has been the theme this week, and I'm going to stick with it. Marquez North and Mallow Creek is going to be able to score, and I just don't see Vance being able to score with them to keep up. So I'm going to take Mallow Creek in this game. Yeah, I'm going to have to take Mallard Creek as well. I'm really looking forward to this game, first and foremost, because I haven't had a chance to see this Mallard Creek team play other than the Butler game earlier this season, which um, obviously everybody knows what happened in that game. So I kind of want to see what what this new quarterback, as well as this offense, can do against uh, another defense, another pretty good defense, and a really good defense other than Butler. Um, And I also want to see Vance. Are they going to be able to you know, respond and against a good team and play well after being so high after that independence game, they kind of just let down. Uh, but I think Lorenz Bryant will have a really good game. He's going up against a good team. And uh, another player is Nolan Corpening. I keep mentioning his name. I think he's going to be, his name is really coming on strong now. Last week he had two touchdown catches, two interceptions, and returned one of those interceptions for a score. So he's continuing to play well uh, this season. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to have to go with Mallard Creek there as well. Uh, Kevin, do you know where you're heading out this Friday night? Well, Josh, I really think New Bern at New Hanover is going to be the best game in the state this year. It's going to be some high-powered offenses, and that's the game I'm trying to get to. But i still got to find a place to stay if I go down there. So if anybody has some recommendations, let me know. Shoot me at Twitter at KevinUts1. And in, in fact, if you have any other game you think I should give me a reason why I should come to that game, shoot me at, shoot me at Twitter at KevinUts1 or KevinUts1. 89 at Yahoo is my email, but um, that's the game I'm really looking to go to. If not, my other eye is on Hoke at Richmond. I think that could be a great game as well, and that's another one I'm very interested in going to. And like I said earlier, I'll be at Vance at Mallard Creek, and you can follow me at Josh McKinnon for live scoring and updates in that game. And that's it for this week, this week folks. So until next week, you can follow us at NC Preps on Twitter or at ncpreps.com for your latest high school football news in the great state of North Carolina.